Hi folks, welcome back to another video here on Delivery Drivers Rideshare Alliance channel. If you're a new delivery driver, you drive for Lyft, Uber, Instacart, Ship, DoorDash, um, Vho, any of the apps that you make money on uh, on the side or you do it full time, please take a second to hit the subscription button, the like button, and the notification bell so you won't miss any more videos. So welcome to another video. Uh, all credit goes to Rideshare Professor for this. I um, I just happened to be passing by the channel and looking, and he had you know he has a lot of videos, but one in particular that he did from a couple of days ago um, on April twenty second or twenty third, because today's the twenty fourth. This is an important one, folks, because um, I guess um, in short, the uh, U.S. Supreme Court has a Lyft and Uber trying to uh, beg them or help them to stop us from suing the companies when they do evil and wrong against us. In other words, there's an arbitration agreement that you sign when you on all of these apps, when you, you know, acknowledge that you're driving for them, right? They make, they force you into signing that, but you can opt out of that by sending an email to the company that you're working for and says, I opt out of the arbitration agreement because they know that they're ripping the drivers off, stealing, um, manipulating the apps <clears throat> and paying us very little and they don't want to get sued by it. So basically, if you opt out of that, then you're able to sue them. Well, Lyft and Uber are trying to go to court to try to make the states not be able to... Uh, have us sue them. In other words, make force us through arbitration. Why do they want that arbitration? Because the arbitra the arbitration uh, agreement uh, consultants or whoever works, they all work for them or they get paid off by them. So, so a favorable, favorable uh, outcome will go their way instead of the driver's way. So let's jump into this video because this is important. Here we go. This is Rideshare Professor. So Uber and Lyft ask the U.S. Supreme Court to block state officials from skirting arbitration mandates. They want to like literally force that arbitration rule on you each and every single time something arises legally. And um, I always advise you every time new terms and conditions are released to opt out of that arbitration clause, right? So yeah, so anytime you sign up for a new app, folks, they'll, when you sign up, there's a an agreement that you sign, and a lot of people don't read through that agreement. They just scroll it real fast and then click OK, which now gives the authority for them to say in court, well, that person clicked on the arbitration agreement and agree, agreed to doing it through arbitration, so why they're not supposed to come to court over here. And it's the same thing when they put out new agreements like DoorDash about, what was it, six months ago or five months ago, put out a new terms. It's terms of service. They change their terms of service all the time to make everything in favor of them. But what you need to do is send a, a email to them and even maybe even a registered letter saying that you as the you know, such and such person entitled to be working. I opt out of this agreement. Um, I do, um, you know, <clears throat> I, I still want to continue to work for the app, but I do not like the, I do not agree to the agreement, something like that. Okay. And then that way you have proof that you did that. So in case that you ever try to go to court to try to get back some money that they ripped you off from or wronged you or whatever, now you can go straight to claim, small claims. All right, let's continue. You can actually sue them. Now, my uh, companies, Gig Rocket and Activation Hero, we've probably filed over 4,500 small claims cases against gig companies. So this is why they hate us, right? So they're like, stop, 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 stop suing us. Listen, if you wrongfully deactivate a driver and he or she is losing money, we go after that money at Gig Rocket. Go below. So if you've been wrongfully deactivated, you fall into this category. We'll go right around the arbitration clause, straight into small claims where we always get quick results. Check it out. But back to the article here. Um, you know, they and, they, they, and one of the reasons why is because there are some good judges out there, but a lot of these judges are corrupt, and they're in the club, the big club, and you ain't in it. Remember George Carlin? 
It's a big club and you ain't in it, right? It's because they all do things behind scenes, secret backroom handshakes, or even right out in the open, and that's to ensure that the judge will give them a favorable ruling. But they can't control all of them, so that's why they're going after the Supreme Court to try to make a law or, or to force it so they can't, so we can't sue them, right? Because then we can't win any cases against them, right? So they elevate all the way up to the Supreme Court with, you know, nobody else but Tony West. In a pair of new petitions to the U.S. Supreme Court, rideshare companies Uber and Lyft are asking the justices. So they obviously work together. And you see, this is where they collaborate, right? They're getting screwed there. Oh, let's join together and make this appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. They're asking the justice to bar state officials from using their enforcement power to seek money uh, for workers or consumers who have signed arbitration agreements. The petitions docketed on April the 18th could have huge implications if the Supreme Court agrees to hear the case. Technically, the companies want the justices to review a 2023 California state court appellate ruling that allowed California's Attorney General and Labor Commissioner to continue litigating claims that Uber and Lyft owe money to drivers who were misclassified, misclassified as independent contractors. They so, uh, in other words, folks, the companies know that a lot of us are going after them and people are suing them in court. And so now, instead of, you know, because they don't want to get all the money extracted to them. But I would say this, that even if they do, you know, if, if they, they'll just, They'll just go bankrupt or they'll claim bankruptcy uh, instead of paying us. I gave you a story once about that guy, Lorenzo. I don't know his first name, but he owned Eastern Airlines. And that movie, Michael Doug with Michael Douglas called uh, Wall Street, that was based on the Eastern Airlines thing. Uh, they called it Blue Star Airlines in the movie, but basically he went bankrupt and destroyed his own company. And remember, he says, I am not a destroyer of companies. But that's that's how evil these people are, even if you were to go after them. You know, small money is one thing, but if you're going after them for big money, they, they, they're ripping the drivers off left and right. All of the companies, Uber, Lyft, Shipt, Instacart, you name it, they're all DoorDash, they're all doing it. And so this is, so now the, if this happens and they pass this stuff, like this is, this is, Ill, this is fully illegal what they're doing. It's against the constitution too, um, the U S constitution. So what they're doing is wrong. It's also part of agenda 2030 ag agenda, uh, 20, uh, 21, you know, the, the plan for sustainable development goals. This is part of the plan to get control of transportation and the industries that follow suit with that. All right, let's, this isn't long folks. This is a short video. Let me play the rest of it here. There's only like two and a half minutes left. And that the California court of appeal, like state appellate courts in five other states misread a key 2002 Supreme court decision when it concluded that state officials are not bound by workers arbitration agreements. That's right. But no mistake, the theory espoused by Uber and Lyft would preclude all kinds of litigation by state's attorney general from consumer protection and unfair competition litigation to anti-discrimination suits. If Uber and Lyft are right, state AGs and other officials simply would not be permitted to bring lawsuits seeking monetary relief for anyone who signed an arbitration agreement. The company yeah, said see? as much... So in their petitions. So in other words, they want to again, they want to block the person who signed the arbitration agreement to go at because they know do, do you see the guilt here? The guilt is on these companies because it's clear to see what they're doing, folks. I mean, the fact that they're paying us peanuts to work for them, right? And not being profitable or prosperous is 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 a testament to their to what they're doing. In other words, <clears throat> They, they know they're ripping us off. They know they're paying us the lowest wages they can. And they know that at some point the, the people are going to retaliate, especially you don't think they know about my channel and other channels that are, are activists and doing these type of things. And even rideshare professor, they know that we're going to go after them at some point, big lawsuits, class actions. There are already, there's already many of them out there. 
uh, you can just look them up. You just look, you know, lawsuit against DoorDash. I mean, they, they, they got, they got constant ones going against them, but Uber's to blame. They're all to blame, but interesting to note, which I've mentioned in other videos <clears throat> that all of these companies are all owned and controlled by the same people, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, and, uh, the World Economic Forum, the people that attend those, those, uh, forums, they're all part of this big club that we ain't in, right? All right, to finish the video here, here we go. Arguing that in response to Supreme Court decisions allowing companies to impose mandatory arbitration on workers and consumers, states have become increasingly likely to adopt creative devices. In the words of Lyft's lawyers from Munger, Tollers, and Olson, to undermine arbitration. And then oh, also, I, I just have to mention that too. It's not just about drivers, folks. <clears throat> the customers have been fighting back too for unfair practices of getting feed to death, you know, because they're, they're ripping the cust customers off just like they're ripping the drivers off. So the customers try to go and sue them too. And they're told, oh, you have to go through arbitration because they, they, when they, you, when you use that platform, you agree to arbitration as a customer too, not just as a driver. So that's why you have to opt out of those arbitrations, folks. The Supreme Court steps in. Uber and Lyft said state officials will continue to expand such loopholes until the Federal Arbitration Act is effectively nullified. Without the justices' intervention, nothing will stop defiant state legislators from deputizing just about anyone to litigate on behalf of just about anybody who agreed to arbitrate just about any dispute, said Uber counsel from Gibson, Dunn and Crutcher. The FAA should not remain subject to such easy evasion. The California Attorney General's office said via email that it's reviewing the petitions and will respond appropriately. <laughs> Shut them down. Shut them down. If you want to bring a suit, you should be able to bring a suit, period. Yep. Yep. Right? They should not um, appeal to the Supreme Court. Oh, protect us, protect us. Right. So I'll give you an example. So... Um, Recently, I got ripped off. I was tip baited on Uber by a, you know, a customer that took the tip back supposedly. But how do I know that? How do I know that Uber didn't do it? So I called up Uber. It was hours after the thing. I noticed I only got two dollars and fifty seven cents. And I said to the to the customer service agent, "Why? Uh, where's the other uh, six dollars and change that I'm that I'm owed? Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, five dollars and change that I'm owed uh, uh, from the this delivery." that I did, I said, I go, you know, I, so she goes, oh, let me check on it. And she said, oh yeah, the customer took it back. But I go, well, how do I know you guys didn't rip me off? I go, I'm going to, I told the lady, I said, I'm going to sue you in court. I mean, I feel like doing it just, just, I mean, I've talked about this before. I haven't taken any full actions independently of myself yet, uh, for, for different reasons or whatever. But the thing is, it's like that, alone pissed me off and not only the fact that what they've been doing to me i mean folks ever since we've been driving for these app companies they've been stealing and ripping us off i also have proof of that and then you say well how come you haven't taken action yet because i'm waiting for the appropriate time and the appropriate uh uh things to happen to to, to be do to do that and then also <clears throat> You know, I, I mean, it's good to retain legal counsel to be able to, uh, but it costs money to do that, right? But in small claims court, it doesn't. And that's the action that you can take because people go, well, how are you, how can you do that? Well, all you do, you see in certain states, in certain states, it's, uh, it's capped off at a certain amount. So in my state, it's, I think, $7,500, 7,500 is, is the maximum amount by law that you can sue any one person or any company for in small claims, right? So, you know, you might say, well, why would you go to court for $9? Well, that's why I didn't do it because I'm like, it's only nine bucks, but if you can get instances <clears throat> of one and many and many others, you can tie them all together and, and sue them for one big thing. So you just save that up over time and you, and you go into court. Now, can they retaliate and try to deactivate you? Yeah, but then you can sue them again for that, for wrongful deactivation on that level, okay? In other words, the money 
like I told the lady, look, I don't care. I didn't, I says, I took that job for nine dollars and two cents. I didn't take it for two dollar, two dollars and fifty-seven cents. So I told her, I says, I'm gonna sue you guys. She goes, Oh, well, you could do that. And I said, you know, they, I couldn't believe how enthusiastic that the lady on the phone for Uber Eats was to defend Uber, you know, their stance. You think that she'd have compassion saying, geez, because they hear all of these people calling in all the time, right? Like I'm working for you and you don't have my back. Well, why don't they have our back? Because they're stealing too. They're ripping us off. They don't care whether the customer did it or whether they did it. They, they, they dip into our tips all the time, folks. They steal all the time. So what I'm saying is, as a small action that you can take by yourself, you don't even need a lawyer to go to small claims because you can show your own proof and present your own case in a small claim situation. And a lot of times it's just satisfaction knowing that you brought them into court and they know they're guilty of what, what you're accusing them of. But, the, but what the thing is, you may not win that for whatever reason, but at least you had them spend some money that they can't put in their pocket and, you know, go out for lobster dinners every night, as I say, <laughs> lobsters and filet mignon, you know, because that's what they want. They're using our money for everything and anything, folks. All right, let's finish off here. There's only, I don't know, less than 20, 30 seconds. Uh, let, let me just back it up slightly and I'll just roll the rest of what he was saying here. But in essence, folks, you know, I'm one guy, I can, I can only do certain things or some things or f even for just myself sometimes, but all in all, we need to be united as a united front and that's up to you. You know, you could form your own groups, you can do your own things to try to speed things up and, you know, don't wait for just me, little old me, try to do something on your own too. I mean, I still got a, I got my own battles too, but I mean, it's, it's sickening to see what these companies are doing, folks. It just is, isn't it? Let me know in the comments what you think, what your thoughts are. What are you doing, you know, to, to, for yourself, to help people? Do you have any plans? Do you have any suggestions? Uh, what, do you, what do you think, folks? All right, let's finish off what he said, and that'll be the end of the video here. I just wanted to let you guys know about this. This is crazy that they're trying to block us from suing them in court because they know that they're, but why would, why would someone have to go after the Supreme Court to try to have them make it so you have to go through arbitration? Because in arbitration, you never, the, you'll never win because those arbiters are on their side. So on their side, not on your side, right? All right, here we go. Finish off here. To the Supreme Court, oh, protect us, protect us, right? From these drivers that have legitimate cases, we'll continue suing them. We'll continue bringing the cases. We'll continue winning them. So please leave your comments below. Oh, okay. So that's the end. That was the end of the video, folks. Hold on. Um, anyways, I'll just end it here. Um, this went into some commercial here. But thank you for listening, folks, today for today's video. Uh, credit goes to Torsten over at Rideshare Professor. If you haven't checked him out and you're new, make sure you go over to Rideshare Professor. Tell him I sent you. And Torsten, if you're listening, thank you for doing that video. I appreciate it. I wasn't even aware of that. I'm glad I was made aware of that. So I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for listening. Take care.